Last time on Ope, Legends of Raspia. Having finished with his shift, Fobear Dongo Dare sits at the bar enjoying the musical stylings of old Wami Tates. Unknown to him, Zan Hazard Hawthorne watches in the wings, waiting to unveil a mystery. But before she can, a new Torian enforcer barges through the doors of the Mirage, nearly flooring our hero. He tells Fobear and Zan Hazard that old Pappy Dongo Dare is caught in a tight spot. Yet again, summoning a call for help into the desert. Yeah, you know, that sounds like a lot of not my problem. Will our hero meet the call? Will Zan Hazard reveal her suspicions? Find out here on Oh, oh Legends of Raspia. You're going to be the matriarch of this place. You, you do got to care, right? You got to care? All right, all right. Here's the thing. I was kind of on my own quest, and it wasn't just, you know, drinking in this tavern with my, my buddy over there who I've known since college. We, we kill raccoons. Uh, but She's right you know, about two of those three things. I'm standing right here, but I have been her friend for a long time. When did you get here? Oh, you moved? I was on the piano with you. It's just the describer of the story forgot to add that hilarious element. Oops. Legends yeah. of Raspia. But all right, I mean, I guess I'll go with you, especially if it means I have to spend more time with this not criminal over here. Yeah, this is fun, but uh, this guy is freaking out. You guys all look over with a perception test. Ooh. One. <laughs> I did better than you. I don't see anything. All I can see is Wami Tate's over there playing his piano. He's the center of my vision. Okay, so that's kind of how Tommy does his thing. It's seemingly as though he has retroactive capabilities. But uh, he might just be a really talented piano player. Um, so with your perception rolls, you guys don't see. Kind of stole your joke from episode one there. Episode negative one there, Faux Bear. Uh, should I say Fobo? Fobo. You guys see the Torian who came rushing in. He has Torian armor on, is not wearing a helmet, has made claim to bearing head injuries as though he's been hit in the head several times was his claim. Um, and rode into Kaltaria on Faux Bear's Kaltaro, which he has known his entire life. He's known this little Kaltaro since she was a lizard puppy. Luppy. Nope. Lizard puppy was Wami Tate's his old man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all geared up. Do you have all the pothos you need for your journey before we embark out into the described sandstorm across the desert to rescue your grandfather, who, as the Torian put it, is in, is in a tough place, a tight place. Getting tastefully louder as you guys exit the bar, you see, with your previous perception test, that your Kaltaro. Um, and by the way, what is your Kaltaro's name, Fobear Dumbledore? Sandy. Sandy, the desert lizard Kaltaro, cowboy horse lizard Kaltaro. Sandy, for short, mm -hmm. is um, waiting out there. And as soon as she sees you. <gasps> Sandy. <gasps> Sandy. <laughs> She's like nuzzling on you. Oh, oh, you know, making making desperate lizard sounds, which I downloaded. That wasn't me making those sounds. I just made the face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is what she says to you. Zan Hazard, are you storming out with them or are you hanging out? You said that you would come here to do something other than drink. And then uh, kind of got uh, waylaid by just the momentum of ones and such. So uh, you could still be talking as you guys walk and are walking. Almost nailed. Yeah, well, you know, I'm just here hanging out with my cousins because a lot of the people here are in fact my cousins. And the thing is, I don't know, one of my cousins got into a little bit of a kerfuffle the other day. And that was that was the main reason I was here was to do some investigating. But now, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'll go on this journey and get to know other people better that I have absolutely no reason to be suspicious of whatsoever. Let's go! Yeah. Now, hold on. I appreciate your narrative pliability here, Zan Hazard, and your, capa yeah. your, your, your capacity for understanding the meta of the timeline on which we are operating. However, I'm also very curious to know what this one 
He points directly to you, Faubert Dago, there, as you're nuzzling with your giant lizard upon which you ride across the desert. Uh, I want to know. Yeah, I mean, I want to know what the lizard thinks, but after that, I want to know what Phobo thinks about your evidence that you brought in your pack. If you look on your character sheet, you will find it. It's, it's Phobar. That's just one time. You've said Phobo several times. I know, I but only, only one time that's been actually, like, recorded. I don't mean to shoehorn my religion on you or anything, but I believe that on some plane of existence that was recorded, and uh, if some say fourth dimensional listeners wanted to go back, I'm pretty sure you said FOBO in episode zero. Oh, you're so great. All right, I'm going to walk over to the uh, Sandy, and I'm going to crouch down next to Sandy, and uh, I'm going to pull out the evidence from my pack and be like, what do you think of this, Sandy? Let's all do a perception test as we go back to the world's turn and see what Sandy thinks of this. Better. Ask Sandy for her opinion. That's going to be 16. So Sandy just kind of like looks at the uh, this this evidence package that you have, and it's wrapped up in uh, in a sort of a lizard skin wrapping. Um, <laughs> after after Kaltaro pass, it is practice that they wait until they have passed for natural and peaceful causes, and then they let no part of the animal go to waste. It's really the best of all worlds, if you ask me, Gadley Bowman. It's not in the sea. I wasn't asking you. Yes, fool. Go back inside. You're supposed to be running this place. Oh, oh you're right. Oh, I forgot I was bartending. Oh, I'm sorry. What? That guy is bad at his never, job. I know. I'd never forget that I was bartending. Just saying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so, speaking of forgetting, uh, this lizard doesn't appear to have a reaction, but I, being a tracker and a very perceptive folk, have noticed that Faubert Dongo Dare recognizes that evidence. And I, the storyteller and GM, Han Blackheart, am here to tell you that you also recognize that evidence with your successful perception test. Fobert, do we have any guesses as to what that evidence might be? Uh, I haven't. You I mean, get three no. guesses. Guess three things. I don't want to guess. What is it? She says as she wraps, rips open the package and puts out in front of you, dangling, hanging, like, Material-based shame waving in the wind as though to be laughing at you as the sandstorm whips in from the north. You see your old pair of pants. And I'll go on to explain as we kid, which is, by the way, my name. I'm taking my mask down now. Look at that. I have a mustache. It's canon. So I, as we kid, I'm here to tell you that uh, we found these at the scene of the assault of the young Hawthorne, AJ. You gotta understand, it looks pretty bad. What are you doing beating people up and leaving your pants in place? Thanks for me, do I, do I look like, uh, do I look like someone that would be just beating people up, first of all, and then second of all, looking uh, like I'd be dumb enough to just like, after assaulting someone, leaving my pants at the screen, sign the suit to the crib, the sh- you know what I mean? You sound a lot like you're lying, but that's up to Zan Hazard, because I don't do that kind of perception. I'm, I'm gonna look at the lizard who didn't know what was going on and be like, good lizard, just so that Sandy knows I'm not upset at her. Oh, Sandy is uh, Sandy has been going on in this story that um, probably could be per- uh, perceived or understood if you spoke a little language called shitter. She's talking about her treats. I'm pretty sure she's talking about treats. I'm gonna pull out a biscuit Almost in my always. pocket before we end this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give her a little treat because she's so, a lizard. Did you happen to purchase a biscuit at the bar? We'll say you did roll a twenty. So you have a bit, if you would like. You can trade it in for a biscuit, toss it though, Sandy. I have a sandwich, but I will also trade it in for a bit to give her a biscuit. All righty. Actually, that real happens. quick. I have two bits, because there was one I didn't use. Can I get two biscuits? You may indeed get two biscuits for two bits. Okay. There you go. Biscuits. Improv. All right. So- Lizard good. good yes, lizard. and go. good lizard. Yep, yep. Oh, I did the important things today. Anyway, look at these pants that I initially thought were jellyfish from the way they dangled. You gotta buy new pants, man. I did yeah, buy man. new pants. He did buy new pants, and that's why this whole pa- wait, what? 
I bought new pants. When did you buy new pants and for why? Um, good last, question. Uh, you know, last set, um, because I needed bigger pockets. For what? More bits. Oh, interesting. I also like that this conversation is taking place over what would seem to be a time lapse, wherein we have gotten onto your Kaltaro and made our way over to the Hawthorne estate and the stables therein, where we're going to get their Kaltaros for Zan and myself. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and head out into the desert. Isn't it cool that we already did that? And now everyone is on their own Kaltaros. However, perception roll as you did succeed. Zan Hazard, you, um, you gave a biscuit to another Kaltaro. And now your Kaltaro, who is jet black and dark browns with very deep reds running along the column down his spine. Sort of like a mohawk bearded lizard. A mohawk lizard. Uh -huh. Nobody asked me what the name of my lizard is and I am very offended by that. Oh, I apologize. That's because everyone in town knows uh, what your lizard's name is, but I forget. It was inconsiderate of me. The listeners do not know. What is your lizard's name, Zan Hazard Hawthorne? Tronk, because he's got quite the trunk. Do you, will you please spell that for me? T R O N K. Tronk. Tronk. Well, of course, old Tronk. And is this a he lizard? Yeah. Very well. Tronk seems to be able to tell. You can smell the biscuits on your fingers and can smell the biscuits using its tongue as it flaps and flicks in the air, flickering towards Sandy jealously. You can tell that you gave a biscuit to another cat. It's all right, Trunk loves me. I'll give him another biscuit later. You've had like 600 the time I've known you. You guys are riding your lizards. Ha! Up to the north, you do see that the, the sandstorm is in fact forming. However, Zan Hazard, your uh, yeah. trunk looks up at you and is like, <laughs> as we know that male Paltaro sound like. Adorable. <laughs> I think you're cute too there, good little buddy. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do another perception test. I've been fast forwarding the story a little bit and that's on me. They're not always so rushed, but we've got a deadline. Three. Six. Very well. So immediately, sand begins to blister the corners of your eyes, slicing and dicing your soft flesh as you ride north on your Kaltaro. A sandstorm. Do, 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 do. You guys are dealing with a hazard, not of the Zan hazard variety, the type of hazard that causes a plus 10 to all of your rolls. That being said, it's a matter of time before you arrive at this particular location that this Torian Enforcer is leading you to. You can feel tension in the air. You can smell gunpowder along with the sand. And also you can feel sand in the air that gunpowder is in with it. Well, what's a Torian Enforcer? What is this guy? Who is this guy? I don't know anything about this guy. All I know is he wore a helmet, but he wasn't wearing a helmet, and then he, well, he sounded like he should be wearing a helmet, but he isn't wearing a helmet, which was Everyone upsetting. Everyone says that to me. I hope she be wearing a helmet at all times. Excuse me, I was talking, and I'm gonna be the matriarch or whatever of this place because I love sand. So, check and respect. Thank you. Who are you? What are you? What do you represent? Represent the Vasari God? Are you kidding me? Look at me. Look at my beautiful silken sash. It's is that green. is that what the Vasari are? They're silk. They're silky sashes. The Vasari are silk sash wearing nobles who you should, you know, of course, hey, you cow that Taro sounds like know someone I wouldn't like. Why am I letting you take me into the desert, there, and not good buddy? Well, because you're sort of obligated by your station, isn't it? I haven't said in it before. It just felt right. Yeah, this seemed like it was dangerous. We could have waited a day, or maybe the man is, wasn't. The old man is pinned down. He's stuck in a tight situation. I just found my ground. Yeah. Why, why is the trash can all the way out here today? It's a different Lobo. old man. It's not the old man that jumps in the trash, sleeps or whatever, gets stuck in the trash can. It's a different guy. It's his, it's, it's Bongo Bear. It's grand. It's Dongo Dare. 
All right, fine, fine. You do you then, I guess we're following you. I'm already here. My lizard's already like excited to eat some people. Phobo, real quick, gonna divert just to hold up my jellyfish pants and ask you, why were these in the scene of the crime? I'm sorry, I don't respond to people who don't use my actual name. Go ahead and use a, let's do an influence roll, uh, Zan Hazard. Um, it will be plus 10 because you are- And at 20. So, miraculously, he hears you perfectly. And Squeak is like, I believe I have surmised what may or may not have happened. Either the good faux bear Dongo bear was salted from his loss last night at the wash off. Then he broke your mug. Yeah, which oh connects, my, gives did. him, I think, motive to go take his old pants, beat up a kid, and then leave him. What sort of motive is that at all? I don't fully understand the, the term motive. I understand motivation. It's abbreviations I'm not so good with. Why don't you just stick with tracking? Yeah, when this guy said, isn't it? I'm sorry, are you telling me right now that he's probably the one that beat up my cousin? You said he's? Oh, he is? Yeah, I'm thinking, I mean, his pants were there. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's weird What's to lose your pants, but Pants is motive. Gonna... Just because my pants were at the, cr the scene of the crime doesn't mean a dang thing. What sort of, uh, what sort of, uh, uh, assaulter would just leave... So, uh, so in your mind, this is what happened, right? So I went in, I beat up someone's cousin, and then I decided to my take cousin. my pants... Uh, sure, I beat up your cousin, and then I decided to take my pants off, and I thought... <laughs> You know what I should do? I should just leave them here. And then I left. I mean, I am really curious why your pants were there in general. That is, I'm that is a thing. I mean, if you could explain that in a way that is believable, I might let this slide, because that part is weird. So there's this person who's an entire twit, and I hate his guts and everything that he is. And um, he took your pants? It's possible. It's plausible. Um, where did he get your pants from? I don't know. He knows where I live. So he broke in and he stole your pants, shredded them up some, threw them in an alley next to a guy that got beat up. It's plausible. That's some sound detective work there, Phobo. Do I, I look like a fucking detective? I hate to break up the revealing of this mystery, but it'll have to wait for we have arrived at our destination, which is to say we're going to do a perception test to go to the world's turn. You guys have covered a significant amount of ground. Let's see what you were able to pick up. And 16. I picked up mostly sand. Mostly sand. Actually, both of you picked up mostly sand. It's cake. It's the corners of your mouth. It's uh, when you open when you open said mouth. It covers your tongue. It's got grit on your teeth. As a, as a terrifying teenager once said, I hate sand. It's everything. Woo, I love sand. It's delicious. Yeah, yeah. You know that's what they make sandwiches out of? That's a lie. That's not true. It's exfoliating, you know? It's good for the skin in small Oh, dough. it's great for your skin. It's so good for your skin. This guy knows what's up. This guy knows what's up. I mean, it's not from leaving his pants places, but we'll get yeah, back to that. Go that on. Part, that part's weird, but also my curiosities have been drawn to this cave to which we have arrived. So a yawning inside the dunes. Um, you guys have been rolling over these hills of sand, which are referred to, this particular region is referred to as the Shifting Dunes. And they're aptly named because these massive winds and sandstorms are constantly pushing huge piles of sand. It's in essence like watching glaciers, but in fast forward across the desert scape. Rote to rote, they will change in position entirely. Um, but in this particular case, you guys caught it between sandstorms, and you were able to find the same cave mouth that the Torian said that he needed to lead y'all to. He didn't say y'all, but he said it. So, you guys are entering the mouth of the cave, and with your perception, you hear hissing on the wind. But not the hissing of like one of your Kaltaros. You hear the hissing of a potential Hissing on the wind. That's gonna be Wami Kate's new hit single. Oh. 
Oh, Legends of Raspia is brought to you by Bard Fox. Oh, lore in the game Legends of Raspia is created and produced by Han Blackheart and Rick Tahi. Story, music, and sound effects by Han Blackheart. Video and audio editing by Rick Tahi. Faubert Dongo Dare is played by Rick Tahi. Zan Hazard Hawthorne is played by Xanthi Blackheart. Check out her artwork on bardfox.com. Our game moderator was Han Blackheart. Visual art created by Xanthi Blackheart. There's a whole lot of Blackhearts going on here. Check out Bard Fox's Instagram and bardfox.com for our weekly releases of Raspia Music, this show, and much more to come. Thanks for listening, and as always, good luck back there on Earth.